The partial differences method is a method where numbers are decomposed into expanded form and like values are subtracted. This is called the partial differences method because students are finding the partial difference for each place value and then combining the partial differences to determine the difference of the original problem. It is suggested that students find the partial difference of the ones placed first because regrouping may be necessary. Additionally, students are accustomed to working in the ones place first in previous lessons and will work in the ones place first when they use standard algorithm in later lessons. Let's look at a real world scenario. Olivia had 56 daisies at her flower shop. She sold 34 daisies. How many daisies does she have left? To determine the number of daisies left, students will utilize the partial differences method and a pictorial representation. Olivia had 56 daisies at the start of the problem, and then a change occurred when she sold 34 daisies. In order to determine the result, subtraction will be used. To create a pictorial representation, 56 should be represented on a place value chart. The start and change values are also recorded on the partial differences template. 56, and we need to separate or subtract 34. These values should be decomposed into the values of the tens and the values of the ones. 50 and 6, 30 and 4. As students begin to subtract the value of the ones, they should recognize that 4 can be subtracted from 6 without regrouping. In our partial differences template, 6 minus 4 is 2. When students look at the tens, we need to separate three tens. So in my pictorial representation, I can see that after I've separated 34, I have two tens which have a value of 20 and two ones. In my partial differences, 50 minus 30 is 20. Based on the pictorial representation, students should recognize that the difference is 22. For partial differences, we're going to combine the two partial differences. And again, we have a difference of 22. Olivia had 22 daisies left. Let's look at another partial differences example. Here is a real world scenario. Mateo had 62 ice cream sandwiches. He sold 25 ice cream sandwiches. How many ice cream sandwiches does Mateo have left over? To determine the number of ice cream sandwiches left over, students will utilize the partial differences method and a pictorial representation. Mateo had 62 ice cream sandwiches at the start and then a change occurred when 25 ice cream sandwiches were sold. In order to determine the result, subtraction will be used. To create a pictorial representation, 62 should rep be represented on a place value chart. The start and change are also recorded on the partial differences template. 62 as the start and 25 as the change. 62 and 25 should be decomposed into the values of the tens and the values of the ones. So 62 is decomposed into 60 and 2. 25 is decomposed into 20 and 5. As students begin to subtract the values of the ones, they should recognize that five ones cannot be subtracted from the two ones that we had at the start. One ten must be regrouped into ten ones in order to subtract the five ones. Regrouping must also be represented on the partial differences template. 60 becomes 50 and two becomes 12. Ensure that students recognize the connection between how the regrouping is modeled in the pictorial representation 5 tens and 12 ones, which have a value of 50 and 12, 
and how the regrouping is recorded on the partial differences template of 50 and 12. Now that we have regrouped and have 12 ones, we can take away the five ones. Leaving us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones. We're gonna record that also on our partial differences template. When looking at the tens place, students should recognize that two tens can be subtracted from five tens without regrouping. On the partial differences, students should subtract the values of the tens. 50 and 20 is 30. Based on the pictorial representation, students should recognize that the difference of the ones value was seven, and the difference of the tens value was 30. On the recording sheet, the partial differences from each place value are combined to determine the result. 12 take away five is seven, 50 take away 20 is 30. 30 plus seven is 37. Mateo had 37 ice cream sandwiches left over. Students are also expected to subtract two two-digit numbers using the standard algorithm. To support students' understanding of the standard algorithm, a place value chart and a pictorial representation will be used to represent the subtraction. A strip diagram is also used to represent the knowns and unknowns. Let's look at this real-world scenario. Carl's Corner had 82 cans of soda. Carl sold 33 cans of soda. How many cans did he have left over? First, the knowns and unknowns should be represented in the strip diagram. We know Carl started with 82 cans. He sold 33 cans. And we're trying to determine the number of cans he had left over. The starting amount of 82 should be represented on the place value chart. Finally, the 82 and 33 should be written in the standard algorithm. Ensure that students are putting the digits from each number in the correct place value column. As students begin to subtract in the ones place, they should notice that there aren't enough ones to subtract 3 from 2. Students must regroup 110 into 10 ones. We're going to represent the regrouping on our standard algorithm. We regrouped 110, and now we have 12 ones. After regrouping, students can subtract 3 ones from the 12 ones. We can see that there are 9 ones remaining. Three tens can be subtracted from seven tens. We can see that there are four tens remaining. Using our pictorial representation, the result is 49. In our standard algorithm, 12 minus 3 is 9. Seven tens minus three tens is four tens. Again, we have a result of 49. Carl had 49 cans of soda left over. Addition and subtraction are related. Students can use addition to check their subtraction work. To help students see this relationship, we can ask, what if we combined the number of cans of soda he had left with the number of cans of soda he sold? So we had 49 cans left. We're gonna combine that with the 33 cans he sold. When we combine that, the result is the number of cans you started with, 82. A possible subtraction misconception is related to students' lack of understanding of when to regroup. Rather than understanding when it is necessary to regroup, a student may always subtract the lesser digit from the greater digit. Let's consider an example that demonstrates this misconception. A student may fail to realize that nine ones cannot be subtracted from six ones. Instead of realizing that regrouping is necessary, the student may simply think nine minus six is three. 
They recognize that three tens can be subtracted from seven tens and incorrectly record a difference of 43. To help a student overcome this misconception, have the student use base 10 blocks and a place value chart to represent the subtraction. Have the student represent 76 using base 10 blocks on a place value chart and then ask the student to, to separate nine ones. So we've got seven tens and six ones. When the student notices that there are only six ones and we are unable to subtract nine, discuss how one ten can be decomposed into ten ones. Have the student model the regrouping with the base ten blocks. So one ten becomes ten ones. After regrouping, the student should see that there are now six tens and 16 ones on the place value chart. Have the student model the regrouping on the standard algorithm. Ensure that the student understands the connection between how the regrouping is modeled with base 10 blocks and in the standard algorithm. After regrouping, ask students if nine ones can be separated from 16 ones. Have the student separate nine ones and three tens using the base 10 blocks. Then have the student use the remaining base 10 blocks to determine the difference. There are seven ones and three tens remaining. So 76 minus 39 equals 37. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Elementary Math Minutes. We hope you'll find these videos helpful and we look forward to you joining us next time. See you then.